All right, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? You look like today you didn't shave, which is rare because you're so such a golden boy. Oh, is that is that it? Today you look a little rougher. You look. You like know what I got? You know, last week you were like, you know, what are you eating? I was like almonds. I love almonds. Yeah. I had a, a couple of different people in Michigan Stadium hand me almonds. It was a thank you. I appreciate it. It was great. Hey, I was like, maybe, maybe somebody in Indy could hand you a razor. Look at you today. You're handsome. Okay, let's go with this. So let me give you, here's the big four. Here's what college football play, you know, gave us. Yeah, yeah. The bottom line is if Utah wins, they're number five. If Utah wins, they're in. I have no problem. But here's. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. Well, if Georgia's going to lose to LSU. So let's yeah, assume but, that. But you're, you're just assuming Utah wins well, in the argument over Oklahoma. Well, they've been above them all year. Yeah, but Oklahoma has a much tougher opponent this week than than Utah does. Oh. That's not that is not a clear cut deal. Okay. I, I don't know if why 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 would you just okay. think like Utah okay. goes automatically? Okay, so here's going to be my big argument. And Oklahoma already hates me. This will go deep. There's a difference between bias and assumption. Okay, bias is I would never vote Clemson number one because I went to South Carolina and I hate those guys. Okay, assumption is. Uh, I think I'm going to put Clemson in because every time they're in this, they play big. They're great in big games. That's assumption. The Big 12's never won a single game in this playoff. In this playoff, Oklahoma's you're right. Oklahoma's 0-3. I have eyes on a TV set. They're playing flag football. They don't match. Utah's got NFL bodies all over that defense. Okay. I don't think any. I don't think Oklahoma or Utah are going to beat Ohio State. Well, the problem is, is that we, we still have to pay attention to resume at some point. And the fact of the matter is, is that Utah has played one ranked team and they lost. Okay. You know, we've never had a team enter the playoff without at least two wins against ranked opponents. Utah doesn't have one yet. Okay, they you- might get one against uh, against Oregon, but they're only a ten win team. Meanwhile. OU is going to have three wins against ranked opponents if they win on Saturday. Two of those will be against an 11-win Baylor team, one of them on the road. You know, so I, listen, I just – and I disagree. How do I not look at Oklahoma and the Big 12's past in these big games and they can't stop a nosebleed? This whole sport's okay, based on assumption. Okay, but who stopped them? Hold, hold, hold on. You're, you're making this off of the, the – an indictment over the on the Big, big 12. 12. If you actually look stati- statistically, excuse me, into bowl games – what Big 12 teams generally do in bowl games is that they're gaining about their average, giving up about their average, and then they they drastically outperform based on the averages that their opponents generally have in their regular season. So I, I think that's a t- completely wrong assumption to just throw okay, Oklahoma but out. Oklahoma's going to have the much better resume. And, and who are you to say? Listen, I would love to see Oklahoma and Utah play. I think Utah has been, when I just watch them, a better team, Oklahoma's going to have a much better and stronger resume. Okay. If, if Utah gets in, it will be an unprecedented okay. weak well, resume you know to what? get in. You know what? Precedents need to be broken. You just like it because you got a home there. You've always loved Utah. Okay. You've been a Whittingham guy. Joy, you know what I'm talking about, right? He's always... You didn't all, say that yesterday. I have a home there and a very nice people. Here's the point, <laughs> You're second or third? Okay, whatever. So here's the thing. <laughs> So you said, Clat, you said, I've watched oh. and I think Utah's better. I so, think. By the way, so have I. Precedents are made to be broken. But here's the thing about Oklahoma. Oklahoma always has a better resume. Every year, they're the better scoring team and the flashier team and the Heisman team and the quarterback team and the Lincoln Riley team and the Bob Stoops team. Every year, their resume looks great because they beat a bunch of flag football teams outside of TCU that plays real defense or at least tries to. The bottom line is the Big 12, I'm going, college football asked me to do a preseason ranking based totally on assumption. Nobody's played. The NFL doesn't ask me to do that. College football asks me to look into history, look into assumption, look into recruiting, look at the NFL bodies. I just totally disagree with your premise about the Big 12. If you're, if listen, if OU was out there getting pummeled in the playoff, then I would, I would say, yeah, like there, there's clearly their defense a is. Uh, yeah, their defense has been not even close to up to par, but their defense is drastically better this year. Do you know they're the number one total defense in the conference? Oh, I don't want to hear it. They are. But listen, you don't want to hear it. Those are the, those are the facts, though. That's the problem. And to suggest that they didn't have a chance against Georgia two years ago, that game was in overtime. That was an unbelievable game. Mm-hmm. Last year, they basically spot Alabama 21 points, and then from there, played an unbelievable game. Yeah, after they spotted them 21 points. Well, I've talked with Lincoln Riley about that. I thought it was a mistake that they deferred. I mean, you're just riding them off. I think that is a complete 
completely flawed position right now. You can't write Oklahoma I'm off not, because Alabama beat them last year. No, I'm writing off a conference that's never won a game in this. I'm assuming they can't stop anybody because I have eyes on a TV set and nobody can stop anybody so in that conference. So you want to give Utah credit because Marcus Mariota no. was a generational player no, and no. throttled I a give, very flawed, undefeated no, Florida State I'm gonna team? No, I'm going to give Utah. Yes, you are. That's what you're doing, no. though. That's what you're, you're saying. The Big 12 has never won in this okay, uh, type of Pac- scenario. Well, well, Oregon's the only Pac-12 team to have won in this. That's I'm not one. arguing against the Pac-12. All I'm saying is that they had a generationally talented Heisman winning, Heisman winning player, and they beat Florida State, who was drastically okay, flawed. But that Washington year. stopped a lot of Alabama. You win. When they played in the playoff a no, couple years I, ago. I, listen, this this is a false premise. I will uh, not right. allow you to sit here and oh, say yeah. this to America. Wa- Washington's performance against Alabama in the playoff was not nearly, not nearly the performance that Oklahoma gave against Georgia two years ago. Not even close. I just think it's, listen, this is, by the way, an argument against eight because we're arguing against flawed resumes. You know, the best argument for Utah is an argument against Oklahoma. The best argument for Oklahoma is an argument against Utah. There's, there's nothing about these two teams that I say like, yeah, they deserve an opportunity to go play with those three big boys that have really earned it. We see the world differently. Anyway, <laughs> one of us sees it right. Hey, the view from that chalet in Utah is <laughs> it's a different on. view than I have. All I'm right. just going to tell you that. Joy, a different view than you? Okay. I, I don't know. Uh, so uh, One of everything. One car, one wife, one house. All right. But go ahead. So th- I'm not sure if this is even a national topic. You can yell in my ear if it's not. The Dallas Cowboys have become USC football. Oh. The brand is shiny and fantastic, and it's got history, but the quality of the actual football is not great. USC is going to re- uh, retain Clay Helton, who's a wonderful guy, thought he should have been the coach. I think the program's had a total ceiling. Recruiting's in the tank. Yeah. And I, I look at the USC situation, and I look at the Notre Dame situation. Notre Dame had a series of coaches that didn't work, went and got Brian Kelly. Now they're a player. Yep. USC's had a, a, a bunch of coaches that haven't worked. I think they don't go need, need to go get a big-time coach. What do you make of Clay Helton being retained? Um, I think that if you look at it in and of itself, if you put blinders on and you try to look at just that decision in a vacuum, it doesn't make much sense. If you If you – Try to take a 30,000-foot view of the chaos that has surrounded not only the university, but the money that they've had to spend as a university outside of the athletic departments. Well over $400 million that that university has had to spend on lawsuits and settlements outside of the athletic department. So I don't know if there's an appetite from the president down to go spend money to fire this coach and do this when he's 8-4 and and in the college football playoff rankings, and in particular when he's a guy that – Everybody likes the players' respect, and he's willing to make changes. They're going to have to make drastic changes. Who are they going to get? get I, I, I'm not sure. I, well, let's be honest. I like Clay. I advocated for Clay being hired, but I do think coaches hit ceilings, and I think there's four major programs in America, USC, Oklahoma, Bama, Ohio State, mm-hmm. that are different. Yeah. And when they have the right coach, they dominate their conference. Yeah. We've seen it with all of them. Um, what about this? New I, stadium, nobody's in it after they get blown out by problem. Bama in the opener. I, I've told you that the two reasons why I think ADs should make decisions are butts in the seats, revenue, and, and recruiting. And both of those are, are at, at low points right now for USC. What would you do? You're the AD there. Uh, I would tell him he's got to go hire Morgan Scaly, uh, Scaly the Who's defensive that? coordinator for Utah. All right. Because he's obviously done it. Scaly is a terrific defensive coordinator. He's been under Whittingham for a long time. If if you're not going to change Helton, you got to get guys that can recruit. So your yeah. staff has to change, and then you got to get a better defensive coordinator. Because right right now oh, they're not funny. tough enough yes. on the line of scrimmage. By the way, everybody, did you hear that? Old Clatsters like, if you want to get the defense better, hire a Utah's coach. He's great. You didn't say Oklahoma's coach. You said Utah's coach. Well, I mean, Alex Grinch has actually created a, a turnaround of epic no, proportions no, with the Oklahoma defense. Actually, go look at the statistics, and you'll see hey, that hey. Grinch has done a, yeah. a I hate remarkable to be a, job. I hate to be a Grinch on your argument, but you said Utah's guy <laughs> fixed everything at USA. Well, he's West Coast. Grinch is not a West Coast guy, technically, even though he coached at Washington State. You can go hire Alex Grinch. You're going to have to pay him $2 million. Okay, how about this? What are you wrong Let, on now? Go ahead. No, no. You and I are right. Oh, Harbaugh, 44-19 NFL. Do you see who's up for the Carolina job? 
If you're Jim Harbaugh today, all the nonsense you take from the critics, all the hate you get from guys at this network and other networks, I'm Jim Harbaugh today. You know what I do? Won you 10 games. Go to the Citrus Bowl without me. Boom, I'm thanks for flying United. I'm going to the NFL. This is this is deeper than that. If this was another program that he didn't have deep ties to, I think that would be the case. He grew up there. His dad coached with Bo Schimbeck. Criticism He's, every day. Yeah, that's fine. But he knows what the truth is. And I've talked to him about it. You know, Jim has done an unbelievable job. In 2014, folks, and this is not... The criticism he gets is deserved when it comes to Ohio State only. Outside of that... You have to understand what he's done. He's taken a team that in 2014 was five and seven. They missed a bowl game for the third time in their history. History meaning as soon as the Big Ten expanded to allow teams to go to other bowls other than the Rose Bowl. And it was wear only helmets. the third time. Yeah. And, and we're out. So he took over a five and seven team. Ohio State won the national championship this year. 2014, folks. So that's what he walked into. What I what I bristle at is this fact of like people like well he's got to beat Ohio State it's like the margin right now is so big between those two programs from what he took over and inherited to where he's trying to get and this is not the year to evaluate Jim Harbaugh based on what he does against Ohio State Ohio State is the best team I've ever covered in the booth I have never covered a better team than this Ohio State team in the booth. This is the wrong year to evaluate Jim Harbaugh based on what he does against that particular Buckeye team. I don't even say Ohio State's my criticism. My only criticize, uh, criticism of him is marginally he couldn't beat Michigan State enough. Now he is. Well, now he is. But early, come on, you're better. And th the only real criticism I've tagged him on is, dude, you're Jim Harbaugh. Get the quarterback thing figured out. They've been kind of a sloppy mess at quarterback. Yeah. I, he's got to be – hey, I like the guy. But he's – Shea Patterson's nice. Didn't lose much at home until last week. Yep. But he hasn't been good enough at quarterback. He should get a five-star guy every year. He's Jim Harbaugh. He's an NFL quarterback. He's a great recruiter. It's Michigan. Uh, I think he needs a quarterback. Shea has played really well down the stretch. Here's the one criticism I would give Michigan is that they play too undisciplined when they get into those matchups against Ohio State. You yeah. can't fumble. You can't jump offside. Well, I mean, that's – When that's you're playing against deal. better players, sometimes you are pressured. You jump in. offside when you're playing playing against better players, that's a, that's a fallacy. <laughs> okay, these were all jokes about the Utah house. I ski uh, in my backyard only. All right, Joel Clapp. E exactly. <laughs> ski in, ski out. Must be nice. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Take that, America. Uh, I have a ski resort in my backyard. All right, Lucas Oil Stadium, Indianapolis, Big Ten Championship game. I think Ohio State, I think it's really close because they beat them earlier. It's hard to beat a team badly twice. It is. Wisconsin's got a great defensive mind and the best running back I've seen since Ezekiel Elliott. I think it's close for three quarters, then they win. I know it's only been a couple of runs, but I'm tired and cold. Let's go back to my hey, living room. Hey, he's on live again Friday from Indianapolis. You know <laughs> Whitlock's from there. He is? Oh, good Lord. He's, he's one of these he's guys so that's always like, Brady Hoke did fine at Michigan. Okay, five and seven, pound sand. Yeah. I'm out. That's why I stopped bringing Whitlock on the show, that nonsense. <laughs> the Hoke nonsense. Just nonsense. <laughs> I was done with it. I'm done with him. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.